Okay, so we have some other important cell parts to talk about that aren't considered part of the endomembrane system. The endomembrane system is called endomembrane system because all these parts kind of work together. All these membranes work together. Now, this, this one, <laughs> this organelle has membranes, <laughs> but it's not part of the endomembrane system. Go figure. It has a very different role that really doesn't connect to the other membrane. So either, even though it's a membrane-bound part, really acts independently. The singular version of this word is mitochondrion. But we usually hear the plural, mitochondria. We usually talk about them in plural form. These are by far the most interesting to me of all the organelles in the cell. They really almost act like their own cell. They act independently. This is where we're going to make the bulk of our ATP. This is where the bulk of cellular respiration is going to take place. If you remember that general formula for cell respiration that we've written on the board before, I'll remind you of it. You're going to get a lot more detail about this topic. So glucose and oxygen, we're going to break the bonds of that glucose to release all that potential energy from those covalent bonds. And we're going to produce carbon dioxide and water. But more importantly, we're going to produce 36 to 38 ATP for every one glucose. Remember, that's the energy currency of the cell. Reactions that require energy, we have to pay for those reactions with ATP. We can't just feed glucose straight into the reaction. So ATP is very important. We make two of those. So of the 36, let's just go with 36 right now, not the range of 36 to 38. So of those 36 ATP, we're going to make two in the cytoplasm of the cell through a process called glycolysis. And then if we have oxygen present, we're going to make 34 more in the mitochondria. So these are very, very important structures. This is where we make the bulk of our ATP. This is where we extract most of the energy from our food molecules. These are the energy factories of the cell. So ATP production takes place here. What's crazy about these organelles, though, is like I said, they almost function like their own being. And they're almost like independent cells. So here's a mitochondrion. I'm going to draw it really big. It has an outer membrane, and it has an inner membrane. That structure is important to understand, because when we talk about cell respiration in more detail, certain parts of cell respiration are going to happen in different areas of the mitochondrion. It's usually drawn like this little sausage guy. When you look under the microscope, it doesn't look so much like a sausage anymore. Maybe a sausage patty. This is more like a sausage link. But, or a jelly bean, I guess. So that mitochondrion, it's kind of important to understand its structure a little bit. We have what's called the outer membrane. And we have this folded inner membrane. This produces two distinct spaces. We have this space in here and this space here. This space in the middle is called the matrix. of the mitochondrion, and this is the intermembrane space. It's the space between the two membranes. This folded intermembrane is pretty amazing. It's going to have some really important protein complexes embedded that are going to carry out some really important functions during cell respiration. If I took this membrane, cut it here, and stretched it out. And then I took this membrane and cut it here and stretched it out. 
Which one do you think is going to be longer? The inner membrane or the outer membrane? The inner membrane. And that's the reason it's folded. It increases the surface area for cell respiration to take place. It's a very clever setup. Okay, so that's a mitochondrion. This is where cell respiration takes place. It has an outer membrane and inner, inner membrane. What do you think those membranes are made of primarily? Phospholipid bilayer. Same as all membranes in the cell. What's cool about mitochondria is they have their own DNA. So have their own DNA. It's called mitochondrial DNA. If you watch crime shows, you've heard about mitochondrial DNA. They divide independent of the rest of the cell. We're going to go through the steps of cell division. And those other organelles really kind of follow in suit when the cell divides. They kind of sort into two separate cells. The mitochondria divide independently. So divide independently. And obviously, they produce their own energy through cell respiration. Well, those are really the characteristics of a living organism, producing your, your, producing your own energy, dividing, having your own DNA, your own genome. Pretty crazy. There is a theory in biology called endosymbiosis. And you'll probably learn about this if you take a, a higher level biology class. Endosymbiosis. Symbiotic relationship means both organisms are benefiting from this relationship. Endo means it's inside. It's thought that these were probably prokaryotic organisms at some point in time that were engulfed by eukaryotic cells. And part of the huge reason that eukaryotic cells are so successful is because they are able to produce so much ATP from their food. They're able to do that because of these organisms that are really now organelles inside our cell, the mitochondria. Mitochondrial DNA is very interesting. You only get it from your mom's side. And that's because when that egg and sperm unite, there aren't mitochondria on the sperm head. They're mostly on the tail. So if we look at that story really fast, I think it's worth looking at because it's important to understand the significance of mitochondrial DNA in classifying organisms and looking at ancestry. So here's the egg that made you, and it has mitochondria in here, lots of them. Here's the sperm that made you, and guess where the mitochondria is? where the mitochondria are on this sperm cell. Where do they need the power in the tail? So we have the mitochondria here. When these two come together to produce you, that one cell, this zygote, that tail does not get in. So all the mitochondria that made you are all from mom. And that went back to the beginning of time. So we can really track relationships between organisms by looking at mitochondrial DNA. Everybody in this room is going to have very similar mitochondrial DNA. Unless you have an identical twin, your nuclear DNA, your 46 chromosomes, are different from every other human on Earth. But your mitochondrial DNA would be much more similar. And we can look at similarities and relationships among organisms and between organisms based on mitochondrial DNA. It's actually very, very interesting. You can read lots of articles online about mitochondrial DNA. So mitochondria are very, very important organelles. Again, they have membranes, but they're not part of this endomembrane system. They're not part of this network of convecting organelles. One thing that's important to understand is that a major difference between organisms who can make their own food versus organisms that have to consume their food, consume their carbohydrates from other organisms by eating a plant or animal themselves. Plants are able to make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. 
and they do photosynthesis in the chloroplasts. So we talked primarily about animal cells, but it's important to look for a minute at chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are found in some protists. Some bacteria are also photosynthetic, but we're mostly talking about plants. And this is where photosynthesis takes place. Photosynthesis is the reverse reaction of cell respiration. Photosynthesis is taking carbon dioxide and water, and along with light energy from the sun, we're going to package that light energy in the covalent bonds and make glucose. Obviously, carbon dioxide and water don't have much energy in them. In fact, really not much at all. But we can break those bonds, rearrange those exact same atoms, and make a molecule that contains enough energy to support the whole food chain. Plants and other organisms that can carry out photosynthesis don't have to eat other organisms. They can make their own carbohydrates. They then send these carbohydrates through cellular respiration, as all living organisms do. So this is how glucose is made, and that happens in plants in the chloroplasts. So it's important to know about chloroplasts, even though we're not really studying plant cells in, in a whole lot of detail. Two things that really make them different are the cell wall and, and the chloroplast. Peroxisomes are another organelle in the cell don't really need to know much about them. I'm going to skip paroxysms. Okay, and then we have the cytoskeleton. If I, if I took this drawing of the cell and I drew the cy cytoplasm, I mean, I'm sorry, the cytoskeleton, I would just be drawing a bunch of zigzaggy lines. It, it's that very first slide we've looked at. It fills this whole space out here except for the fluid. Okay, so this region between the nuclear envelope and the plasma membrane, this region of the cell is called the cytoplasm. So this is the cytoplasm, this is the nucleus. Those really define two regions of the cell. So out here in the cytoplasm, we don't just have things free floating. Things attach to a specific location. Things are gonna move along this network of fibers. So this cytoskeleton is going to perform some very important functions. You don't need to memorize which parts of the cytoskeleton do what, but you should know the major components of the cytoskeleton, and then you should know the major functions of the cytoskeleton. So let me erase this whole endomembrane system. Cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is made up of several different elements, and you can see them on this chart. You can see we have what are called microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. So microtubules, microtubules are going to play a very, very important role in cell division. It's the microtubules that are going to pull the sister chromatids into the two separate halves of the cell. So microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. And you can see that these three components have slightly different structure. Different arrangement of those subunits. You don't need to know that level of detail. What you do need to know, though, are some of the functions of the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton gives the cell shape, so it maintains the cell shape. Otherwise, it would be just a gelatinous blob. But instead, if we go back to that very first slide, has a definite shape because of the cytoskeleton. 
Anchors, organelles in place. So they're not just free floating, they're anchored to components of the cytoskeleton. This is kind of the transportation network of the cell. In fact, those microtubules are going to be involved in moving transport vesicles. We'll get there, sorry. Here we go. This is so amazing. This is the transport vesicle and this is a microtubule. And these little motor proteins are going to shimmy these products along this microtubule. So nothing is free floating in the cell. It's moving along that microtubule. That is so amazing to me. I think that is so awesome. Cell division. Cell division is going to be a very important role of the cytoskeleton. Okay, and then you can see some other cell motility, actually entire cells moving. Flagella. We're going to see that especially in, in some of the prokaryotic cells. So different functions of the cytoskeleton. That's probably enough on the list. Okay, so those are the major parts of the cell that you should know. Let's have a couple of quick review questions. Okay, let's start with a question about the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, just on a very basic level. Which of the following structures would not be present in a prokaryotic cell? The correct answer would be D, the nuclear envelope. Remember, prokaryote means before nucleus, so no nucleus, in fact, no membrane-bound organelles in prokaryotes. Which organelle is involved in alcohol detoxification? That would be the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. You could also just say the smooth ER. Gosh, my batteries are dying. Sorry about that. Okay, and then finally, which organelle is involved in cellular respiration? Also called cell respiration. My favorite of the organelles, that would be the mitochondria. Mitochondrion would be the singular form. Okay, so that's the cell. That's what's inside the cell. Now we need to talk about what's going on outside the cell, the plasma membrane, and how that plasma membrane is going to regulate what's moving in and out of the cell.